You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. Hey, Bible students, good to be with you again for another one of our videos. This one is on resurrection. Now, if you're a Bible student, you would obviously have read about this because it's a key to the Bible. But if you're not a Bible student yet, then you want to listen because this is key to Christianity, that the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ is empty. He was raised from the dead. And that is the key thing for all of his followers to know that. So I'd like you to to, uh, consider this. You see, really starting back in the Old Testament, a lot of people don't go to the Old Testament to find out about resurrection. But here you are, Daniel chapter 2. Look at what it says. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, as Bible students, or aspiring to be a Bible student, we must pay attention to detail. You see, it says many of those who sleep. Well, that obviously means not all. It says many of those who sleep. It's like they're unconscious. They're, they're not anywhere else. They're, they're unconscious. They have no idea of what's going on. And they will awake, as it says, they will awake to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So there is a lot of information in that one verse. That's Old Testament telling us about what resurrection is and what it leads to. Now, Jesus had to defend his belief on resurrection. He had to tell people about the way it was used in the Old Testament. And this record in Mark 12 is really significant in his argument because The Sadducees, a group of people that lived and and often argued with Jesus because they didn't believe in the resurrection, they came to him with a problem and they, they thought he couldn't answer it. But Jesus did answer it. And look at what he said in Mark 12, verse 26, but concerning the dead that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses in the burning bush passage how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham? the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly uh, misunderstanding and mistaken in what they were doing. Now, I think it's, it's, it's interesting to note the details again, Bible students. Look at them. Concerning the dead, that they rise. So if Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not rise from the dead, their hope is lost. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, at the time Jesus spoke these words, were not in heaven somewhere. They weren't enjoying themselves somewhere. They were dead. Here's the cave of Machpelah. You can see it there. That's where people go to see the tomb that, uh, you know, speaks about what happened to those patriarchs of Israel. So God will raise them from the dead. And that was such a certainty that God claiming to be the God of Isaac, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob meant that they would rise again from the dead, something the Sadducees didn't believe, but so you can see how Jesus answered them. So we need to look at, at this idea of resurrection for what it might mean to us. And I wanted you to see this passage, which if you're a Bible student, you already know this passage. This is a key passage. It's, it's a writing of Paul to the Ecclesia, the church, if you like, at Thessalonica. And he says in chapter 4, verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So the Lord's telling us, Uh, through the the words of the Apostle Paul, that there will be a day of resurrection. And we'll have to look further to find out what he meant by the dead in Christ will rise first. But we'll look at that in just a minute, Lord willing. So those who were alive and remain, which may be us, 
we're not going to go before this. We're going to have to wait for this event to take place, and then we'll join them, as he says, as he says there. Now, for those skeptics, for those people that we often talk to who don't know their Bibles, who don't study their Bible, um, it's important to understand that Jesus has already raised people from the dead. The power of Jesus to raise people from the dead, where their bodies had already started to corrupt, was he just called them out of the grave. Lazarus, come forth, which is there in the John 11 record. And people can read what he did and what people thought of it and how they reacted to it. And how because it was such a strong testimony to what Jesus could do, others wanted to put him to death and put Lazarus to death as well. Strange, isn't it? Such a wonderful idea, such a, a, a thing for people to take comfort in and look at the future through resurrection, who would fear death if they really believed in resurrection. Now, the Apostle Paul says something which is even more significant in terms of how we as uh, people in the you know, 2020s are looking at the uh, Christian message. He said in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 13, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Now, most Christians would think that it would, should be the other way around. If Jesus hasn't risen from the dead, then there is no resurrection from the dead. But that's not the way it's stated. Resurrection is such a certainty in Bible testimony that he says, if there is no resurrection, then Jesus himself is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your preaching or our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, we're found false witnesses of God because we've testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not rise up or raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And he went on to say, and if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. And those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. You see, now that idea is foreign to a lot of people who claim to be Christian. If a person dies, like they say, and the, the soul goes off to heaven, and the person knows they're in heaven, and they have conscious thoughts about it, how could it be said then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished? You see, that's how important resurrection is. If there's no resurrection, then everybody who has died are finished. They're perished. They've gone forever. So he goes on to say, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable or most pitiable. And now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Now, Jesus being the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep is to be understood. You see, it's, again, Bible testimony where we want to make sure that we read closely what the Bible says. How could Jesus be the first fruits of resurrection when, in fact, he had already raised Lazarus from the dead? It must mean something different. And surely you will find as you go through the record, there's something further to be said. We'll speak about that a little later on. First. He, in Psalms, again, going back to the Old Testament on this, in Psalm 49, verse 20, a man who is in honor and yet does not understand is like the beasts that perish. So the qualification for people who rise from the dead, don't forget, Daniel said many would rise from the dead. He did not say all would rise from the dead. So here's one case of where people wouldn't rise from the dead. A man who is in honor yet does not understand the gospel message is like the beasts that perish. Got to remember that. And to connect this with what we've been saying and are dealing with uh, prophecy in former videos, I wanted to go over again what we said in this recent video. In Zechariah 14, verse 5, it says, Then you shall flee through the mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azel. Yes, you will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Thus, the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. And we're looking at who are these saints? Well, the saints are people who've been raised from the dead, along with those who may still have been living and have now been given 
true sainthood, made immortal, never to die again. They are the sanctified ones that are being spoken of here. Now, there is one final thing I wanted to talk about because uh, not everybody is going to be raised. It's going to be raised to everlasting life. That was clearly stated in the Daniel chapter 12, verse 2 passage, that there'd be a resurrection to everlasting life and there would be a resurrection to everlasting shame and contempt. So we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive things done in the body according to that he has done, whether good or bad. That will take another short video to just outline what the Bible says about judgment. And before I leave, I want to talk to you, uh, uh, just go through a, a basic idea of what we said here, and then just tell you about what we want to plan or what we are planning for the next video and something we want to repeat in further videos. First of all, Resurrection is a vital Bible teaching. It was taught in the Old Testament. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must be raised from the dead. The dead in Christ, that is, people related to Jesus Christ, will rise first, as it, as it indicates. Jesus Christ is the first fruit from the grave in that he rose and then was granted immortality, first one. But not everyone will be raised. It happens before Armageddon, and resurrection leads to judgment. You can take that away from our video today. We were well-based to go into our next one on the judgment. But before that, we've noticed that people have been asking questions, and we haven't answered them. And we have enough questions. I'd like to take a time of the one video to just give uh, an answer to questions that have been asked and uh, give you uh, the indication that if you want to ask questions about anything we're saying, you ask them, and we will, Lord willing, take the time to put these uh, answer videos together uh, in a timely way. When we've received enough that we can uh, put that into one video. So again, Bible students, thanks for watching, and may God bless your study of his word. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at bt f at cdvideo.org. If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.